Hard hit regional banks are back in the green today, but it has certainly been a tough couple of trading weeks here for these names. PacWest Western Alliance among the worst performers over the past five trading days as investors still continue to worry about some of the stress that we have seen in the sector. The S&P regional banking ETF down nearly 12 percent in the past month. For more on this, we want to bring in Brendan Coughlin. He is a Citizens Financial Vice Chairman and Head of Consumer Banking. Brendan, it's great to see you here in studio again. So just give us a sense from what you're seeing and what you're seeing in terms of client behavior. Yeah, look, the, the market is uh, reacting very different than what we're seeing inside the bank. Um, you break up the world up into consumers, into wealth customers, and then corporates. And uh, citizen skews very heavily into the consumer uh, base. It's been extremely stable. In fact, um, through when SVB failed in early March through today, we've been generally flat in deposits. We've seen some outflows, but a lot of inflows too. Um, uh, there's been a little bit more volatility in the wealth segment and commercial where they're kind of getting down to the FDIC cap. But banks, uh, there's a flight to safety going on now. And banks our size are seeing a lot of folks diversifying in as much as out. So um, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot of stability in the business. Yeah, what does that tell you about where the consumer is? I and mean, we talked a lot about where the savings rate is potentially sort of diminishing after so much had been saved up over the last several years. I mean, what are you seeing on that front? And what does that tell you about where the mindset is? Yeah, consumers are still very resilient and strong. And really what we're seeing right now is a normalization, which has been expected for quite some time. Uh, consumers you know, were about 40% high in deposits uh, from pre-COVID to the peak. Uh, that's been cut by about half. So you're starting to see a little bit of a diminishment in excess liquidity. But by and large, consumers are still very much more healthy right now than they were even pre-COVID. On the credit side, we're also seeing a, a very mild uptick in delinquencies. But that, I would just classify that as a normalization. It's still well below where it was pre-COVID. There's nothing I'm looking at right now that would suggest there's a lot of risk in the health of the consumer other than a normalization, which we all expected coming off the heels of COVID. Yeah, and Brendan, when we talk about the volatility that we've seen in regionals, of course, there's been brought to light, or I should say re-entered the discussion, some additional regulations and what exactly that could potentially do to a bank like yours. Give us a sense of why you think, I would guess, that it's probably not the best idea and what a landscape dominated by big banks, what that would mean for consumers. Well, we, we already are compliant with regulations that would be for the next tier up uh, versus uh, where we're at now as a category four bank. We're the, uh, one of the highest capitalized banks in our peer set. Uh, we've got plenty of excess liquidity. Our, our deposit base already skews heavy consumer. It's very stable. And so uh, you know, all the regulation that's being discussed around uh, liquidity actions and tightenings, we, we feel good about it, that we're already uh, sort of compliant with all those uh, regulations. I, I don't know that it's necessary if you just act Academically looked at the health of the regional banking sector as a whole, uh, there's a risk for overcorrection. The question is, uh, right now, what the market is really reacting to is fear more than facts. And so is there a need for some stability through regulation is, is really what I think the regulators are, are, are debating right now. Uh, but there's, there's nothing that we would see inside of the institution that would suggest there's a need for a lot more regulation uh, with the facts that we're looking at. Brendan, getting a little bit more about the consumer, you talked about the savings rate, what we're seeing in terms of delinquencies. What are you seeing in terms of spending patterns, what people are spending on and where? Yeah, spending is up um, substantially still from pre-COVID, uh, about 15%. Uh, it's been flat, though, the last couple of quarters. So you're also starting to see a normalization. About half of the excess spending from pre-COVID is actually real goods and services. People are buying more things. The other half is inflation-based. Uh, and you're seeing a normalization there, too. So travel's coming back. Gas is coming back. Restaurants are still so you're hard-pressed to even find a reservation at restaurants these days. So uh, you know, a lot like the consumer, when you look at the actual data, the economy still feels really strong. There's obviously storm clouds gathering on the horizon. But the behavior of the consumer hasn't followed suit the way you would normally expect. Does that surprise you, given the fact that there are so many things to be a bit worried about? And we haven't even talked about the debt ceiling yet. You know, we uh, went through an unprecedented time period in COVID, uh, and I think hindsight's 2020, but the overstimulation of the economy with um, lots of free money, whether it's in the form of not having to make loan payments or extra stimulus or fiscal policy, I think has created a bit of a vacuum here that we, uh, it's hard to actually predict and model. There's no comp, comp for this in the market. And so 
it's not all that surprising if you stare at consumers and they still have more money in their pocket, uh, generally speaking, than they did before COVID and uh, their debt loads are lower, that they're feeling confident enough to spend. I think it will take unemployment really picking up before this becomes a real moment for consumers and it really changes behavior. Um, and we'll see. We'll see how that, the next couple of quarters play out. Yeah, and I'm until now, the labor market has certainly been extremely resilient. Brendan, what do you make of the negotiations, the showdown of what's happening right now down in D.C. over the debt ceiling and how serious serious the potential fallout could potentially look for your sector. You know, we've been here um, every time, yeah. every, every year, every two years. And so, uh, you, uh, you know, I like to believe that it's just political jockeying and hopefully we'll get a, a last minute deal. I think that's what most people would believe will end up happening. Um, you know, normally that's the way you look at this is that it's, it's politics and you kind of control what you can control. With what's going on right now in the market on fear-based trading, uh, I think you just have to look at it and say, uh, make sure you're running a safe and sound institution. Make sure we're creating plenty of liquidity in case of the unknown, whether it's debt ceiling, whether it's another bank failure. You got to be prepared for these things. And so we're taking a lot of actions to put our arms around our customers, make sure that uh, we're viewed as a safe destination uh, for deposits. Uh, we're lending out prudently to customers that we have relationships with. The bank is still wide open for business, but we're taking uh, precautionary measures. Right now it's about balancing defense and offense. We're also playing a lot of offense. We're growing in New York City. We're doing a bunch of things uh, to really uh, make sure, you know, when, when in markets of turmoil uh, in any industry, you get winners and losers and folks that come out of this cycle uh, in better positions end up winning in the long run. So we're really trying to balance that defensive and offensive mindset uh, to navigate uh, through the cycle. Are you optimistic we're going to be able to avoid a recession? Powell seemed a little bit more optimistic than he had been at the last meeting. I, I personally, I'm not an economist, mm -hmm. but uh, with everything that I see, it feels unavoidable to me that we're going to hit some level of a recession. The way I would call it would be a much more mild one. I think that strength of the consumer will buoy the economy uh, and protect against a deep and prolonged recession. I think we'll see uh, a run-of-the-mill recession. Now, for most of us, we haven't been through one of those in an awful long time. So what is a run-of-the-mill <laughs> recession? But I do think we'll ultimately have to have unemployment get up a little bit higher to stem inflation. And getting inflation back down under control will still be a top priority of the administration. And it feels, it feels very hard to believe that we can get that to happen with without some level of recession to me. All right, Brendan Coughlin, always great to speak with you of Citizens Financial. Same Thanks here. so much Thanks for Thanks a lot for having us. me.